Hello everyone, my name is Mitisha Gupta and I am your host for today's podcast, Win Over Hypertension. Where you can learn how to take care of your blood pressure through exclusive insights and practical advice. Today we're talking all things about hypertension. Why is it caused, how it matters, and most importantly, how to take care of it effectively. Hello doctor, it's my honor to have you on this podcast today. Hi friends, this is uh, Dr. Sindhil Kumar Nallusamy, Chief Cardiologist from Rana Hospital in Trichy, Tamil Nadu. So doctor, by now we all know what hypertension is, but can you please elaborate on it? I mean, why is it so important for us to take care of ourselves even when we feel fine? Hypertension is one of the coronary risk factors. What do I mean by risk factors is a person is at a high risk for developing a stroke or a cardiac event that is a, to put it in a layman's term heart attack. So hypertension is one of the risk factors like diabetes, smoking, alcohol, high cholesterol, obesity, family history like this hypertension is a risk factor for developing a stroke or a cardiac event that is a heart attack. Okay, but why is it so often called the silent killer? What makes it so dangerous over time? There is a difference between a disease and an event. Disease is hypertension. Event is a stroke or a heart attack. Since hypertension does not per se have major symptoms, it is called as a silent killer. So it manifests as an event itself at the time of diagnosis for a person who becomes a patient within a minute. So it goes unnoticed. That's why it's called as one of the silent killer. So doctor, I would like to know what are the most common reasons people develop high blood pressure? Is it genetics, lifestyle or something else? Broadly, if you want to classify hypertension, it can be due to primary hypertension or secondary hypertension. When you individualize the cause in general, it can be due to genetic, it can be due to stress, it can be due to lifestyle, it can be due to dietary modification or secondary hypertension, which can be due to renal disease, kidney diseases or pregnancy or chronic steroid therapy. Whatever may be the cause, the hypertension should be addressed accordingly with the correct dietary restriction, lifestyle modification and doctors advise the patient, the person should follow the given advice in a very, very meticulous way to prevent the end organ damage that is consequence of the silent killer disease, which is hypertension. How is blood pressure exactly diagnosed? When looking at the blood pressure readings, can you elaborate on the exact numbers people should be looking at? Generally, when you take the blood pressure recording, the numerator is called as systolic blood pressure. The denominator is called as the diastolic blood pressure. So the number normal blood pressure is 120-80. The term hypertension means the elevated blood pressure. When it is more than 130 or 80, it is hypertension. So depending upon the person, certain situation, we start the drugs depending upon the numbers to individualize that particular person and decide about the starting the drugs for that particular number that is blood pressure. So I would also like to know if someone has just been diagnosed with high blood pressure, what are the changes you would want them to make in their daily routine? When a person becomes a hypertensive, that is newly diagnosed hypertensive patient, first we give a trial of dietary modification, that is salt restriction with salt containing food avoiding. There is a difference between salt restriction and avoiding salt containing food. Salt restriction is around 3 grams salt restriction per day. Salt containing foods to be avoided is chips, pickles, puppets, tinned foods, noodles, 
ketchups are all high salt containing foods which can be which should be rather it should be avoided 5 gram salt restriction is perfect 3 gram is meticulous salt restriction this is regarding diet regarding exercise half an hour brisk walking is a must to bring down the stress levels third is smoking and alcohol to be avoided there is no question of reduction in smoking and alcohol q u i t quitting smoking and alcohol with this trial of salt restriction exercise quitting smoking and alcohol with stress reduction like breathing exercise and dhyanam still the bp is not under control then we need to start the particular patient on drugs this is at the baseline borderline hypertensive patients when the patient is being diagnosed at the high end say for example with end organ damage or with certain scenarios in echocardiographic findings then straight away the patient should be started on drugs with the additional dietary modification lifestyle modification and stress reduction can we say that hypertension can be treated without medication so early stage of hypertension can be treated with lifestyle modification salt restriction and exercise but when the numbers are high at the time of diagnosis itself then straight away the person the rather the patient should be started on drugs anti hypertensives with lifestyle modification weight reduction smoking cessation alcohol cessation and salt restricted dietary restriction okay uh, i have a question related to that only let's assume that somebody's blood pressure is coming under control can they come off medication or is it a lifetime commitment usually when the patient is being started on medications for high bp there are two scenarios for which we start the drugs one is to control the number second is to prevent or protect the end organ damage that is cardiac protection brain protection to prevent stroke and renal protection that is kidney protection so it is better to be on anti hypertensives life long as i told you it is not about the numbers alone it is about protecting the organs which get damaged with high bp so very rarely there are few subset of patients for whom we can wean off we can reduce the bp drugs uh, in a long term follow up patients i would also like to know what would happen if high blood pressure gets untreated for years especially the body parts which gets affected the most so generally as i uh, told previously there is a difference between disease and the event disease is hypertension event is the consequence complication due to the high bp high bp can cause a stroke high bp unaddressed can cause a heart attack that is myocardial infarction high bp can affect the kidneys high bp can affect the arteries going to the eyes also so it is not about controlling the bp alone it is controlling the bp and protecting heart brain kidney and other vital organs which can be affected by high bp so meticulously the patient should follow the treatment advice given by the treating doctor in addition in the house it that should be a salt restriction and uh, flu and, and that should be meticulously follow the patient should follow an exercise schedule even weight reduction can facilitate bp reduction and stress to be reduced so remember four five yes one is a salt restriction second is sugar restriction third yes is smoking cessation fourth yes is spirit to be avoided that is spirit in the form of alcohol fifth yes is stress reduction sixth is sleep a 7 to 8 hours of undisturbed sleep 7 yes is saturated fat to be 
reduced fatty foods to be avoided eat yes size size in the form of obesity reduction weight reduction ninth is skipping skipping in the form of exercise remember this eight nine yes to keep your body healthy heart healthy brain healthy and your bp under well under control so this marks the end of our podcast win over hypertension i would like to say a huge thank you to the doctor for sharing such valuable insights to us remember hypertension isn't just a number it's a signal and with right knowledge and action it's absolutely preventable if you found this episode helpful do not forget to like share and subscribe and share your valuable insights with us always remember stay informed stay proactive and most importantly stay healthy this is mithisha gupta signing off from this podcast win over hypertension